Yo, welcome back everybody to a brand new video here on the second channel and today we're going to look at some more new post rotation decks and today we're going to be looking at the ancient box deck. Now in the last video we looked at the future box deck and how that archetype is doing in Japan right now, what lists are looking like and how the deck plays, but now it's time to look at the ancient side of things with ancient box. Now ancient box is in my opinion the better performing deck right now in Japan. It's doing pretty good. I think it might be even better than Future Box because it might be the new best one prize attacking deck here. And Ancient Box has been looking pretty promising so far with the brand new single prize Roaring Moon that we have. This deck has some pretty insane options in a game and i'm definitely excited to look at the ancient box here before we get in the video if y'all are new here to the second channel make sure to subscribe down below we're on the road to 11 000 subs we're getting very close so if you haven't subscribed yet make sure to subscribe down below i'll also leave a link down below to pokega book here if you want to go check out all of the deck lists yourself that i used to look at in today's video so we got ancient box and we're also gonna be looking at roaring moon decks in japan's rotation format mainly because like Kind of the same thing, Ancient Box, Roaring Moon, I think are kind of the same thing where they're this, you know, they're both ancient heavy decks, and I think they're very similar. So I'm gonna include both the Ancient Box decks and the Roaring Moon decks. But like I said, Ancient Box is mostly one prize focus at the moment, and I do think that the deck genuinely has potential. It could even be the best new one prize deck in the post rotation format. So let's take a look here at some of the key players into the deck before we get into the deck list so starting off we have the main attacker the single prize roaring moon now this card is very very strong it's got 140 hp which is honestly kind of tanky for a one prize basic pokemon and its main attack here um retaliation feathers does 70 damage for two dark energy then does 10 more damage for each ancient card in your discard pile so if your deck has a ton of of ancient cards in it you can do a lot of damage with this attack and you're going to be hitting some pretty insane numbers if you are able to accumulate a pretty big discard pile full of ancient cards it is obviously still a dark pokemon which is really good synergy with the normal roaring moon ex so while you're playing the baby roaring moon you can also just use roaring moon ex in the deck too as a big delete attacker because it's already going to be using dark energy and sada but yeah this is the idea behind this card is you're just playing a ton of ancient cards we got a new ace spec we got a brand new ancient supporter alongside sada we got some more ancient pokemon basics in the deck we can combine this with and honestly it's creating itself a pretty good one prize deck i mean it does really good damage 70 base damage is already kind of decent you're already off to a decent start you just gotta pile your uh deck with uh, ancient cards, discard all of them, and you're hitting a really hard. Mostly, maybe in the late game, this card will be a bit better, but even in the early game, you can still get a bit of chip damage off. Another really good card is, of course, the brand new Ancient Ace Spec card, the Awakening Drum, which allows you to draw a card for each of your ancient Pokemon in play. Now, while I do think that Future has the better Ace Spec, because Future's Ace Spec is just broken, this card is pretty good too and the main reason you're gonna play it is literally just to fuel roaring moon's attack like it draws you a bunch of cards you can you know have like four ancient pokemon to play draw plus four you have sada to draw three you have Radiant greninja to draw more like you can see a lot of cards in a single turn with Awakening Drum. But I think the reason you're going to play it is because it's another ancient card you can play in your deck. Like, you can play Prime Catcher with the deck. You can play Master Ball. You no, probably won't play Master Ball. But you get what I mean. Like, you can play those other Ace spec cards. But I think that, honestly, this is just probably the best uh, Ace spec and... Uh, yeah, it's the best they expect to play because it's an ancient card. You can burn it and fuel Roaring Moon's attack while also drawing cards. Another really valuable attacker we've been seeing in the ancient box deck is the one prize Coridon. Now, it's got the attack um, Primordial Battering that does 30 damage and does 30 more damage for each of your ancient Pokemon in play. So, if you have a full board of ancient Pokemon, this thing it does 100 and what 50 180 damage something like that that does a lot of damage this thing is going to be hitting pretty pretty hard with this first attack and uh, that's pretty good for a one prizer once again having 140 hp makes this Coridon do quite a bit of damage you do have a shred attack i don't know if you're gonna be playing fire energy in the deck but you do also have a shred attack another thing to note about the Coridon is it does use fighting energy in its attack cost and there's another fighting ancient pokemon you can play in your deck that actually synergizes really good with Coridon. So you do have some decent type coverage within the Ancient Box deck. And Coridon is a nice one prize attacker that as long as you're putting Ancient Pokemon down on your board and your board is just ancient stuff, this thing is going to be doing a nice chunk of damage. It might even be doing more damage than Roaring Moon in the early game, which is pretty cool. There's also Fluttermane here. 
while this card might not seem great, it's actually been decent in the deck. So it does have that ability, Midnight Fluttering. When it's in the active spot, your opponent's active Pokemon have has no abilities. So you shut off, you know, a lot of stuff. You shut off Shivery Chill. You shut off Coin Bonus. You shut off Charizard EX's ability. You shut off Flower Selecting. You know, obviously the bench can still work. Your opponent can still use, you know, Bibberol, Baxcalibur, Raiding Greninja, like stuff like that. But shutting off the active's ability isn't terrible either. And then you have Hex Hunt, which does 90 damage for three colorless energy. And then you put two damage counters on your opponent's bench Pokemon anyway, like. So not really the most relevant attack ever, but the ability is pretty annoying. And and there are going to be some matchups where having Flutter Mane in the active can be a problem. Like specifically the Lost Zone variants are going to really not enjoy this. Well, they can use Colrus and Greninja. They can't use Flower Select and they can't use Cramorant against this thing. And that's where this thing kind of becomes a decent little attacker. It's also just like a good Pokemon to lead with. Depending on the matchup, you can slow your opponent down a little bit more. It sucks that it doesn't apply for all of your opponent's Pokemon, kind of like Clefki does. Maybe this card would have been a little too good if it was Klefki. And then we have another new Ancient Supporter card here with Explorer's Guidance. Now, this is a great card to play with Ruined Moon. It allows you to look at the top six cards of your deck, put two of them in your hand, and discard the other card. So, essentially, you know, in a perfect world, you see six Ancient cards. You can put four Ancient cards in the discard pile for free, and that's plus 40 damage for Baby Ruined Moon. Keep in mind, this is also an Ancient Supporter card, so that's another Ancient card you can put in the discard pile for free. It also does do a decent bit of digging. I mean, seeing six cards is a good amount of, it's a good amount of search. I mean, that's six cards. That's more than a Colrus's experiment can see off the top of your deck. Now, you only get to take two of the cards as opposed to, you know, three like Colrus, but being able to to see that many cards is good. If you're looking for a specific card, odds you find it aren't that low. I mean, you got to explore his guidance to find you six, and it is an ancient card. So let's take a look here at some of the ancient box deck lists here in Japan and see what they are cooking with. So went over some of the main attackers. Um, mostly this deck is comprised of single price Pokemon. There are other ancient EX Pokemon in this set, but the ancient box deck doesn't play any of the new big EXs in, from what I've seen so far, like the Raging Bolt, the Walking Wake, the Gaijin Fire. They're not really in the Ancient Box deck. So that is kind of an interesting thing to note about Ancient Box, unlike Future Box, where it's like a mix of one prizers and two prizers. Ancient Box really just plays, well, you'll see what it plays. But yeah, it's mostly just a one prize attacking deck. Um, starting off, we got this first deck list here to look at. Um, here, this one did actually win a tournament. Um, it is playing just single prize attackers. It's got the Roaring Moon. It's got the Coridon. We got the Flutter main in the deck and Slitherwing. So like I said earlier with Coridon needing fighting energy, which actually synergizes really, really nicely with the Slitherwing. So Slitherwing is a great fighting type attacker. It does 120 damage. Um, it also burns your opponent's active and it does 90 damage to itself. If you put an ancient booster capsule on it, which you can see this deck plays four of, you can put the capsule onto the Slitherwing and then the Slitherwing um, can take what? It can attack twice, but mainly because this thing is a fighting Pokemon. It's really good against Iron Hands EX and any other like fighting weak Pokemon you run into, but mostly Iron Hands. So you actually have some okay type coverage in the deck thanks to the Slitherwing. There's no Grass Pokemon, but when you're playing like a, a Beat Stick 1 prize deck like this, like Charizard probably is just going to struggle because you're just trading really nicely into them. Now this deck plays a lot of Ancient cards. We got four Moons, four Coridon, two Fluttermane, two Slitherwing, four Capsules, the Awakening Drum, four Earthen Vessel, which is not only an Ancient card, but it also discards cards from your hand. And you also have the four Sada and the four explorer guidance which is really really good that is a lot of ancient cards in the deck um i'm i'm not gonna count all of them because i'm too lazy but that's a lot that's like plus like that's like what 30 ancient cards something like that that's a lot like you're gonna be doing a lot of damage in the late game you got the pokey stops in the deck to like, discard um the top card of your deck which can sometimes mill even more ancient cards you're just gonna be doing a ton of damage really quickly with this deck with all the ancient cards that you have access to and that's what makes the deck so good and this one this build here just a straightforward single prizer approach no two prizers another single prize approach here and this one actually plays the brand new great tusk which i do want to pull up here real quickly now this is actually its own archetype in japan right now which we'll probably save for another video but this brand new great tusk is looking pretty promising it's got the attack ground collapse which discards the top card of your opponent's deck if you played an ancient supporter you can discard three more cards so you can mill four cards off the top of the deck now this card is actually its own archetype in japan like i said it's not even just 
in the ancient box deck as a tech. It's literally its own deck. Um, it's just, it's, it's the return of Durant Mill. What can I say? Um, but yeah, this card is probably just going to be played to counter Snorlax. I would imagine that's probably one of the main benefits you're going to get out of playing Great Tusk is you have a better matchup into Snorlax, which this deck does play the one Great Tusk. And it's another ancient Pokemon that you don't mind seeing if you're trying to mill ancient cards here and both bills here actually playing at the tm devo this one actually got second place and this one won the tournament both very i mean not really similar builds but they have the same concept going on with like some of the counts in the deck and the tm devo probably just does a lot of work against charizard i think charizard should be fine um because you can just trade really nicely against them if they're playing down like rodom and stuff and like maybe luminion it's even better for you um but i guess like just having the tm devo just makes zard like really really favored um, now, this build here does play the Roaring Moon EX. Now, while you can lean into the one prize attackers with the Roaring Moon single prizer, the Flutter main, you also get access to Roaring Moon EX. Like, it's just a really good card to have in the deck. So maybe instead of playing TM Devo and strictly the one prizers, you can try to incorporate Roaring Moon EXs into the deck to help the Charizard matchup even more. Maybe what you can do against Charizard is... KO two Charizards with Roaring Moon EXs. And then to finish the game off, you can just kind of build up a ton of Pokemon and ancient supporters and items in your discard pile. And then at the end of the game, that's when the baby Roaring Moon is going to be hitting hard. So that could be one way you can lean into this deck is go Roaring Moon EX early and then clean up with the baby Roaring Moon. And I think Roaring Moon EX is not a bad card to run. Well, you're not playing just a straight single prize deck. You still have like the delete option with the Roaring Moon. Um, another build here playing single prizers. Again, Wakening Drum is going to be the main A spec we're going to see um, in a deck like this because, well, you could play Prime Catcher or Maximum Belt. There are benefits to both. It's still just really good to have the ancient Awakening Drum because it's going to be more damage for Roaring Moon. It also draws you cards. It's good against, like, Iono, right? And you can see a lot of cards in a turn when you have, like, Pokestop, Awakening Drum, Explorers, Guidance, Radiant Greninja, even, like, Sada Drum, Pokestop Greninja is pretty good too. Another single prize approach here. Um, one thing to note, is the counts of the attackers, too. I guess this one has a Roaring Moon, actually, but the Roaring Moon EX. But you can kind of see the counts of the attackers. Um, just the four Karidon, the four Roaring Moon, the one Slitherwing playing at the Super Odds, too, to get the Roaring Moon back in case you mill them. Pretty interesting that we're not seeing, like, four, four, four. Like, four Roaring Moon, four Karidon, four Flutter Main. There's just not enough room to fit all that. But, I mean, if you realistically wanted to, if you can find room, you could try to squeeze in even more Ancient cards. You could just max out all of the single prize ancient cards another single prize approach here some of the bills are playing a bit of hand disruption like this one here has a rock sand in it this one to get top 16 in a tournament this one i do like because it's actually maxing out the ancient attackers apart from the slither wing obviously we do see the four moon the four Karidon, and the four flutter main so this build here is trying to max out those options but it does still have access to some extra cards like the Roxanne for the hand option. I kind of like that. Again, just maxing out like four of every, every, every ancient card makes a lot of sense in my opinion. And I kind of like how this build does that. Um, another build here got top 16 uh, with the four Karidon, the two Fluttermane, the four Roaring Moons. We see another build here. Again, Slitherwing seems to be a pretty good inclusion too. It's a good one prize attacker and it also hits for weakness into Iron Hands. So one thing to know about this deck is, well, it can do a lot of damage and put on a lot of pressure. You can kind of see these lists here. They don't really have, like, weakness advantages. Like, Roaring Moon EX is a dark Pokemon, which helps, but, like, Mew VMAX isn't in the format anymore. Gardevoir EX fell off. Like, you're not really doing much with dark weakness right now. Fighting weakness ain't bad to have. But, like, you can see, obviously, Dragon weakness with Coridon. Nothing's weak to Dragon. Flutter Main... I mean, not, nothing really does much either. So, like, it is nice to have the Slitherwing in the deck. Because, like, one thing with Future Box, you have really good typing with Future Box, with the Iron Leaves and the Iron Hands. But in this deck, you're kind of stuck with just, like, boring types. You just have to do big damage. So it is nice to have something. And this is another reason why I like having the Roaring Moon. We can see another build here with that one of Roaring Moon. That's why I like having the Roaring Moon in the deck, because it will help a little bit with those big one at KOs that a deck like this wants to take. Another build here, Trek and Choose. Doesn't seem like a bad card to play. Again, if you're trying to just put cards in the discard pile, Trek and Choose isn't bad. One thing I'll say is this deck reminds me a lot of the Vespaquin deck. So, funny enough, the uh, the Future Box deck we looked at last video is like the Team Plasma decks from back in the day. Um, and that was a popular deck. But now the, the Ancient Box deck is kind of similar to the Vespaquin decks from back in the day. So, some of these new archetypes are just kind of old versions of the... Uh, the archetypes we've already seen. See another build here with that one of Great Tusk. Again, Great Tusk is going to be really helpful against the Snorlax archetype here. Um, this one has Artisan and Jet Energy. Jet Energy is a very interesting um, 
I'm not sure the benefit of having Jet Energy in this deck. This one actually plays Maximum Belt. So Maximum Belt doesn't do what Awakening Drum does, where it draws you a bunch of cards. But it does allow you to do a lot more damage. So Awakening Drum draws you a bunch of cards, but it only does plus 10 damage because it's only one Ancient card. Maximum Belt, well, it's not an Ancient card. It lets you do more damage. So effectively, it, it's like almost, for when it's attached, it's like plus five Ancient cards in the discard pile to any X Pokemon. So that is actually kind of a benefit of playing at the Maximum Belt. We see Defiance Band 2, not a bad option either to do a little bit more damage because it's pretty easy for you to ramp damage up in this Ancient Box deck. So you can get to the point where like having a Defiance Band on the Roaring Moon can let you take a big one at KO on like a basic EX or something. Um, so that's kind of cool. Another build here with uh, the Slitherwing, three Flutter Mains. Uh, this build here has a Fire Energy in the deck. Now, Coridon does have a Shred Attack, so I'm not sure you're really going to need the Shred Attack in any scenario, but we can see this build here does use that one of Fire Energy, which you can put on the Coridon. I do like this build down here um, that got top eight. This one plays Squawkabilly in the deck. So Squawkabilly is not an ancient Pokemon, but what it does do, and we haven't seen the Squawkabilly yet actually in any of these lists that we've looked at. So Squawkabilly actually allows you to discard a lot more ancient cards in the f on your first turn of the game, right? And that is very be beneficial. Being able to mill a ton of ancient Pokemon on your first turn of the game with Squawkabilly is really, really helpful. And that's one of the advantages of playing Squawkabilly. And I think it's actually worth trying out Squawkabilly. It is a two-prize liability, but honestly, you could play Collab Stadium in the deck. Collab Stadium has its benefits. You can use it to get rid of your Squawkabilly, um, or you can use it at some random point in the game to, like, discard an ancient Pokemon off of your bench to the discard pile. So I actually think Squawkabilly... Plus Collapse Stadium could be a really cool combo to play in the Ancient Box deck. Now, the Billy's in this deck, but it also does have three Roaring Moon. So it kind of leans more into the Roaring Moon EXs. But with all the Ancient cards it has, with the Capsules, the Sodas, the, the Vessels, the uh, the Moons, you can still do a lot of damage with Baby Roaring Moon. But still leaning in to that Roaring Moon EX as an attacker. Got an all-single prize approach here once again. Defiance Band does seem to be a pretty popular card. Same thing with this build, playing the TM Devo. So TM Devo and Defiance Band, apart from Ancient Capsule, which you're going to have to play because it's an Ancient card. Uh, we can see Defiance Band and TM Devo being the other two popular tool cards of choice in these decks. And the TM Devo will help against Charizard. It's like the most popular deck right now in Japan's rotation format. And then Defiance Band is going to be really good to help fix numbers because it's like effectively plus three Ancient cards for Roaring Moon when it's active, uh, which is kind of cool. Another build here, very straightforward build, turbo all the way with the uh, the max out. No Flutter main in that build, though. Not playing Flutter main. This build here, however, does play the Flutter main and a couple of trekking shoes to get your stuff back. No hand disruption. I guess that is one thing to note about these decks. We have seen a few of the builds playing the Roxanne. One of them had like an Iono. But yeah, when you're playing a deck like this, you're probably not playing that much hand disruption. Hand disruption doesn't really synergize with this deck very nicely because you're not really trying to Iono your opponent. You're trying to play Sada and Explorer's Guidance so that you can get as many cards in the discard pile as you can. Um, I guess like hand disruption with like Coridon early on isn't terrible, but yeah, you're not really trying to you're not really trying to hand disrupt your opponent because you just want to use your ancient supporters so you can put ancient cards in the discard pile to just keep ramping up the damage. And I kind of like this list too. Bit, bit of a straightforward build, and I kind of like it. I don't hate maybe like a one of Roxanne in the deck, though. It doesn't seem terrible. A lot more builds here. Again, Slitherwing, pretty common. This one, three countercatcher. Because um, you can kind of see, the problem with this deck, too, is you're not playing... You can't really use bosses easily because you're playing these ancient supporter cards. So you can't really use boss that often. But you can see this build playing the three countercatcher, three trek and choose. Countercatcher is pretty good in the deck. You can play like three to four countercatcher. Well, okay, maybe four is a little overkill, but and you can see the build above it playing the two boss, but you can get away with playing the three countercatcher in the deck because you're not really able to boss. If you're trying to use Explorer's Guidance and Sada, you can't use boss. So countercatcher definitely seems like a decent uh, card to play, like a high quantity of. This build here got three countercatchers. Interestingly enough, playing Artisan. We've seen a couple of the builds here using Artisans and Pokestops. Um, I think both stadiums are good. I mean, Artisan lets you fuel ride on gets you your pokemon set up a little bit quicker obviously battle vip did rotate this deck would have loved to have played battle vip pass you can't play body poffin so artisan pokestop i think both those stadiums are probably really good in here both have benefits like artisan sets you up keeps you in the game pokestop lets you technically do more damage if you get lucky with it right um even the split's not bad right if you want to play you know the artisan pokestop split that's not terrible either 
Um, but yeah, we can see the, the Slither Wing once again in this build. This one plays Iron Leaves. I actually don't hate that. So I guess it's one way to help the Charizard matchup. So one thing with these Ancient decks is Sada's Vitality can put you Grass Energy in play. Technically speaking, you can Sada two Grass Energy into play and then attach from your hand and then play down the Iron Leaves and move all the energy to the Iron Leaves and then attack with it against Charizard. So that's like one way you could go about it. You could even play like multiple Iron Leaves. Obviously, Iron Leaves is a future Pokemon, so it doesn't work with Roaring Moon's attack. Attack. But, I mean, I guess if you really wanted to beat Charizard, you could just go, like, Sada, put two Grass Energy in play, attach, Iron Leaves, play another one, do the same thing. Sada, the Grass Energy, attach, Iron Leaves again, and just kind of chain Iron Leaves every turn. And ironically enough, that's actually, like, a decent engine for Iron Leaves is to play in a future in an Asian deck when it's a future card. Um, and then maybe in the end of the game, you can kind of just ramp up big damage with Moon. And at that point, you've already got enough Ancient cards and Discard Pile to just Oko the Charizard, which does make sense. Um... Yeah, I kind of like that. We see another build here with the Iron Leaves. Again, it doesn't seem like a terrible idea. Like, uh, even just playing, like, two. Like, oh, I mean, I guess you don't want to start with it. But, I mean, you have so many other basics. Like, the odds of starting Iron Leaves when you have four Fluttermane, four Coridon, four Moon. Pretty low chances you're going to start with Fluttermane. I won't, or the Iron Leaves, I want to say, when you have all these other basics. I guess Fluttermane would be, like, an insane starter to have within the deck. Um, makes sense. Uh, no switch in this deck. I guess that's one thing to note. These builds aren't really playing any switching cards either. Like, yeah, this build doesn't play any switch either. Uh, which is interesting. Ooh, I kind of like this too. So this build is actually running Cobalion, and this one did get second place. So this was a runner-up deck. So Cobalion's kind of clever. It does let your uh, basic Pokemon do 30 more damage to your opponent's dark Pokemon. And that's obviously going to be very relevant against good old Charizard EX. So with Cobalion, you can do more damage to Charizard. So it helps you reach KOs on Charizard a little bit quicker. With Cobalion in play, you're effectively adding plus 30 damage with the Roaring Moon against Charizard. That is kind of cute. So, Cobalion also could be good. That's one thing I like about this deck is we've actually seen a few ways that the uh, Ancient Box has kind of adapted to Charizard. We're, we're either seeing it with the TM Devos, the Iron Leaves technology, or we're seeing it with the Cobalion, which Cobalion seems okay too. Again, it's not an Ancient card, but it does still let you do plus 30 more damage effectively to Charizard. So, it's like pretty good stuff to have. I actually really like the idea of uh, Cobalion in the deck for the Charizard matchup. I mean, eventually we'll have to see when the set comes out and we can actually test the new cards and see what the best cards to play in the deck are. But Cobalion is not a bad idea. Your deck is literally all basic Pokemon, so the Roaring Moon is just going to punch that Charizard super hard. And maybe that's why you need to take those big one-shots. So I actually like the idea of a Cobalion in the deck. I think that's actually cute. But you also have Roaring Moon. I mean, that's the thing, too. There's actually a lot of ways to kind of deal with Charizard with this deck. Because, like, yeah, you saw that Iron Leaves engine. You saw the Cobalion and the TM Devos. But then there's also the option to play, like, Roaring Moon EX in the deck. Um, I guess one thing to take note of is these decks lists are getting older as we scroll down. The ones we looked at at the start were, like, the newer versions of the deck list. So I don't know if, like, TM Devo is, like, now, like, like maybe the deck needs to play TM Devo to be Charizard. I don't know if that's like the new thing. If you're playing like heavy counter catcher, technically TM Devo is good because you can just like gust everything up and then just TM Devo them at once. So maybe that's the way to go. Because one thing with this deck is even even with this deck, you're still donking those little Pokemon. Just build up Roy Moon on the first turn of the game, 70 damage, knock out a Charmander pretty easily. Um, seems good to me. See more builds here with heavy Slitherwing and we got the Fluttermane in there. Um, this build here with Superior Entry Retrieval. Not a bad idea. Superior Retrieval does discard two cards from your hand. You don't really, I mean, I guess the energy getting back isn't terrible, but the idea behind the retrieval is you're discarding two extra cards from your hand so that you're able to put more ancient cards in the discard pile in a single turn, which is kind of cute. Um, yeah, it's kind of cool. Another build here with Roaring Moon. Again, Roaring Moon, you got options. You got the Moon, you got the Iron Leaves, you got the Team Devo. You can play the Cobalion too, which seems kind of cute. We'll see if that was like the only Cobalion build. And see a build here with Prime Catcher. I mean, Prime Catcher is such a strong card. And because you can't really play boss in the deck, like I said, because you're only playing the Ancient Supporter cards most of the time, playing Prime Catcher is not bad. Again, you lose out on that Awakening Drum, so you have one less Ancient card. But Prime Catcher is just such a good card. You know what I mean? It's such a good card. Sometimes it's just it's worth giving up. That slot. All right. We got another build here with Roaring Moon in it. We're just going to kind of, I mean, I think the list has been not figured out, but we've seen a lot of, like, the same 60s. So we're just going to scroll down, see if we can see any more, like, spicy stuff. Um, because one thing I liked about this is we looked at, like, some of the cool tech cards we saw in these ancient box decks, specifically, like, that Cobalion and the leaves and stuff. Ooh. All right. This build's kind of cute. So it's got a lot going on. Um, there's a lot of other ancient Pokemon, not just the main hitters. We saw the Coridon and the, uh, the Fluttermane, the Great Tusk, the Moon. But there's also other ones. There's Sandy Shocks. Don't forget about Sandy Shocks. Sandy Shocks is, of course, a 
Ancient Card. There's also the brand new Coridon EX. Um, I guess it's actually more of a Coridon EX Ancient deck. I just realized this doesn't even play Roaring Moon. It had Brute Bonnet in it instead. So the new Coridon EX does like 280 damage um, for like a fire and two fighting or something. Um, pretty easy to build up with Sada. So I guess it's more of a Coridon, Coridon EX deck because there's no Roaring Moon in it. Um, but there is that like you could play Brute Bonnet, I guess. Would Brute Bonnet be worth it? Probably not. It does do plus 10 damage for Roaring Moon because of the poison damage. But you're also using two future cards in one. It's probably not worth it, I guess. But it does let you do 10 more damage, which is kind of cool. Um, I don't know. That could be something to uh, consider. More gym battle winners. More bills here with uh, the double Roaring Moon. Like, I don't hate that. Like, playing two copies of Roaring Moon in the Ancient Box deck isn't bad. It does help against Charizard, right? So, at the end of the day, it doesn't seem too bad either. More Great Tusk. Yeah, Great Tusk seems to be a decent one. If Snorlax Control gets really popular, it's not a bad idea to play Great Tusk. Slither Wings First Attack also discards the top card of your opponent's deck. But Great Tusk is just, I guess, more efficient at what it does because you're milling more cards, I guess. I guess that's the benefit of that. You can also just use Great Tusk to mill your opponent's resources while you set up your damage. So there is that option, too. It could be like a good early game lead option also. But I kind of like Slither Wing maybe more for the for the matchup. Maybe that's kind of like what Great Tusk is for. Um, this build here has a one price Sandy Shock. And I'm not going to lie, I don't know what that Sandy Shock does. I don't think it's very good. If I remember correctly, it doesn't do anything insane. I forgot to pull it up, but I don't think the, the Sandy Shocks is like anything insane. I'm pretty sure it's in like that Coridon starter deck. It's not in um, the, 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 whatever the Japan set is called for the, for the ancient stuff. I already forgot what it was called, but uh, I don't think the Sandy Shocks is very good. Um, more Team Devo action in that build there. I don't know if Team Devo is like worth it. Because again, there's so many options you can play. Ooh, this build here playing the Dunsparce in the deck. The new Dunsparce you can shuffle it back in your deck and draw three cards. That's a pretty cool ability. So that's a great way to like have a mini draw engine, drawing three cards in bad. But the problem with playing the Dunsparce, right? You're playing at less future cards. This build here did get top eight, however, though. So keep in mind, that one didn't do bad either. This one here has Gouging Fire in the deck as an attacker. So... I did say that earlier there weren't really that many of the brand new EXs in these future decks, but this one, or the ancient decks, are not future, the ancient decks, but this build here does have at least one copy of Gouging Fire in it. Um, and again, Gouging Fire is not bad, does a lot of damage. Um, you do have to play Switch with it, though, and this build here doesn't run any switching cards, it looks like. No Prime Catcher either, so you can't even, like, use Gust or anything, but Gouging Fire is a really nice big fire attacker, and... Um, could be good against something like Goldengo EX, which is a pretty popular deck right now in Japan in the rotation format. Goldengo's doing pretty good right now, so maybe the Gouging Fire gives you better time against Goldengo. You can go like Gouging Fire Moon, Moon to win the game. You go like one, you go like Knockout, Knockout, and then Knockout. Once you kind of build up a discard pile full of ancient cards, um, that's like the benefit of playing like the Roy Moon EX, right? Is like you can attack with it early on, put the pressure on, and then in the background you can just load up your discard pile with uh, ancient cards, which isn't bad. I mean, you can also just attack with a one prize, or obviously make your opponent take the six prizes one at a time, but you can also go down that route. I still like the Squawk Ability. I mean, we haven't seen that many of these ancient box decks playing Squawk Ability, but I feel like it's a really good card to have in the deck. Uh, feels like it would be anyways. Like, I don't know. It seems like it'd be good. It's more or less here with Roaring Moon and stuff um, to go through. That's about it for all of the ancient box decks. Again, we're going to look at some of the Roaring Moon decks in Japan because they're probably going to be pretty similar. Um, yeah, Roaring Moon. So Roaring Moon in rotation, it does lose some good cards. Battle VIP's Pass specifically and Galarian Moltres are the two big losses. Battle VIP hurts Roaring Moon's potential to pop off on the first turn of the game. And Galarian Moltres gives you a lot of options with Energy Switch. But now Galarian Moltres is gone, so that option is no longer available. So Roaring Moon ironically gets a little bit slower but it does gain a lot more ancient support though so that's the thing so now Roy moon can play cards like the prime catcher you can play awakening drum you have the the single prize option Roy moon's best attacker in the early game was like the more peko right or if you're playing like raiding greninja plus water energy those were like Roy moon's like good early game options but now Roy moon has the one prize Roy moon and also can play the other ancient cards that we already saw like he can play the flutter main like if you're playing a more like roaring moony x focus deck you're not really relying heavily on the one prize roaring moon you can use um these other big one prizes which are better early game leaders than morpeko morpeko's benefit is it does have a free retreat and you can you know kind of move the energy to your bench guy but when you're attacking with the one prize roaring moon early on you're putting on a little bit more damage for starters because you're doing 70 base so you're doing like what Marpeko does, but you can even increase the damage output even higher. So you can put on a lot more pressure with a one prizer with the one prize Roy Moon as opposed to Marpeko. So there are a lot more benefits to playing 
the one prize roaring moon. Even Flutter Mane's pretty good as a lead because you can build it up pretty easily. Flutter Mane's ability can slow your opponent down, and sometimes that can get you maybe a prize or two, and then you can kind of just clean up with like double frenzy gouging or something. So well, Moon does lose a lot of its speed with the loss of VIP and like Moltres with the consistency, it does gain some cool new attackers, which I think is really beneficial. Because that's one thing Roin Moon kind of lacks. It, it lacks good one prize options. It really does rely on the HP manipulation you can do with uh, Emergency Jelly and Ancient Capsule. But now that the deck has options like the one prize Roin Moon, the Flutter Main, uh, Great Tusk, I guess, is an option here. We see in this build, like it's not a bad, it's not bad. Like it kind of offsets its trade a little bit, which is kind of cool. Um, still, Squawk Ability is good. It still lets you have those pop-off turns, and you want to do, like, a turn one Calamity Storm, which isn't bad. Um, Temple of Sinnoh seems to be, like, a good card to play in Ruin Moon. Mist Energy seems good. I mean, Lugia is doing good. That Gujra Arc deck's playing Mist Energy. We've seen a few Charizard lists already play Mist Energy in one of the last videos we did. So it does seem that, like, with Mist Energy's popularity, if you're playing Ruin Moon EX, it's not a bad idea to play a couple copies of Temple of Sinnoh. You could also play the Mawile. Then when you bench, you discard a special energy. We got a moon build here. Kind of a classic moon deck here. Um, playing the Darkrai. It does have a couple Flutter main in the deck. Again, a good way to slow your opponent down while you kind of set up. Um, and again, moon's a little bit slower now without the battle VIP to kind of allow you to pop off. Um, but yeah, the single prize moon is definitely good. Another Darkrai build. The one thing I like about Darkrai is you can use Darkrai really nicely with moon because it can attack if you want. But you can always use Darkrai to use multiple prime catcher in a game. And prime catcher, we all know is a very deadly item. So I think if you're playing a more like straight Roaring Moon EX focus deck, Prime Catcher is going to be the ace spec of choice. Awakening Drum's not terrible still, but I think Prime Catcher is just better with Roaring Moon EX. But if you're playing the one prize Roaring Moon Ancient Box deck we were looking at, and then it's probably better at that point to play the Awakening Drum in the deck. So we see more Darkrai builds. Um, another build here, just playing a lot of like, the single prize Roaring Moon. Again, really good early game attacker, probably better than Marpeko. In fact, one thing to note, all the builds we've been looking at here of Roaring Moon EX, none of them are playing Morpeko in the deck. They've all just been like, nope, no more Morpeko. We're playing Roaring Moon, except for this build does have the Morpeko in the deck. This one did get top four. Morpeko's not bad. I mean, it's still a good way to knock out a low HP basic and move your energy, but the one price Roaring Moon is a bit more bulkier and can theoretically do more damage. But yeah, I think that's one thing that makes Roaring Moon interesting is if you're focusing on the EX build, you can play the one prize attacker with Roaring Moon EX. You can play Darkrai if you want, so you can reuse stuff like Prime Catcher in the game, which is pretty deadly. And then again, you get that really good one prize option with the baby Roaring Moon. So I feel like Roaring Moon gets a bit better with rotation, even if it does lose its speed and the Galarian Moltres. It does gain a good one prize attacker option, and it can abuse Darkrai V-Star a little bit better. We see an Iron Hands built here of the deck, which is kind of interesting. Not terrible. I mean, you don't have Moltres. You can still, like, energy switch off Sada to, like, Iron Hands to build it up if you really wanted to. Iron Leaves, like I said, even Iron Leaves kind of works in the deck too you can use iron leaves ex with the uh the the sada um you can like sada to the to the moon get two grass energy in play attach coming with iron leaves i'm not sure iron leaves is like super necessary in roaring moon because you're already trading against charizard but i guess like if you're walking into like a knockout from like charmander or charmeleon you kind of want to maybe go Iron Leaves because then you dodge the ability for your opponent to just KO you with, like, Charmeleon or Charmander. So maybe Iron Leaves is still kind of a cute option. Um, maybe. Another build here again with the Temple of Sinnoh, the Flutter Mains, the Roaring Moons. Got more Dark Rise stuff going on. More Water Energy. Water Energy is not terrible either still. I mean, the deck can still pull off the Water Energy combos with the Radiant Greninja. This build also can abuse Prime Catcher and Cologne. I, keep, I guess keep that in mind with the Roaring Moon EX decks. Is you can also use Prime Catcher Greninja. So while you already have access to the Water Energy plays, you can now use Prime Catcher and Canceling Cologne to make the deck a little bit more deadlier. So that is one thing I wanted to actually note about um, post rotation Roaring Moon is you can actually you can pull off Greninja a bit easier when you have Prime Catcher Cologne because you don't have to play Cross Switcher Cologne or anything like that or just pray your opponent doesn't bench Mana Fear or something you just now nah, Prime Catcher Cologne and with Poke Stop not that hard to get um, you could even play Dark Eye V Star Prime Catcher Cologne with the Greninja too if you really wanted to go down that road because then you could do that play like multiple times in a game potentially which is actually pretty scary um, see a build with the Dunsparce here as a John Jin hey it did get top eight it's not bad. Roaring Moon doesn't really have its own draw engine. That's one thing to kind of take note of. But those are all the Roaring Moon EX decks. Again, Roaring Moon does lose the Battle VIP and the Moltres, but it does gain a good one-prize attacker with the one-prize Roaring Moon. 
You can play Prime Catcher, which is a great upgrade. You can play Darkrai V Star. You get, you know, the Roaring Moon, the Flutter Main, One Prizer. You can play in the deck. And there you go. That is Ancient Box in our new format. Roaring Moon is looking to be one of the biggest new cards in the game. Either you're playing the EX or the One Prizer. Roaring Moon is going to be on the radar. So definitely, if you're somebody who's a big fan of these, like, put that things in the discard pile, do big damage, you know, United Wings, Mad Party, Vespaquin, stuff like that. This could be the deck for you. Ancient Box definitely looks to be one of, if not the best single prize deck in japan right now it's very aggressive it can do a lot of damage if you have like options to play almost like 30 plus ancient cards so like you have a lot of options there's some type coverage with the slither wing you got some pretty cool options with flutter main the karaidon being a good early game and you even just get to play roaring mooney x still in the deck so the ancient box deck does look pretty promising we saw some cool technology of how to counter charizard because that's like the big thing right now when playing any deck right now in japan is charizard is the big deck in japan right now it's the most winning deck it's the best deck in japan right now so these all these decks need to figure out ways to be Charizard and the technology is there. The Cobalion, the TM Devo, the Iron Leaves, even just playing Roar Mooney X can make a difference against Charizard. But there you go, folks. That is Ancient Box right now over in Japan. I'm pretty excited for this build. I think both Ancient and Future Box are looking pretty promising. Ancient Box, I think right off the bat, has developed a lot quicker and better than Future Box has. But I think Future Box is taking a bit of time to get there. And I think we'll eventually see Future Box become a lot better because Ancient Box right now is looking to be a lot stronger than Future Box. And it is probably the best one prize deck to play right now because all these big, basic, ancient pokemon that are very aggressive can be very devastating to play against when they can attack turn one do big damage when they're all one prize options it is pretty scary but that'll be it for me on today's video here looking at all the ancient box decks over in japan if you all enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like once again we're on the road to 11,000 subscribers here so make sure you subscribe to the channel down below if you haven't already i'll leave a link to poke good book here the site i used to look at all of these deck lists let me know what you think of ancient box in the comments below are you hyped for ancient or future box i'm interested to hear and uh, hopefully soon we'll look at some more rotation decks i wanted to really get the ancient future box decks like kind of out of the way first but we'll definitely look at some more later on hope you enjoyed and i'll see you all later Bye bye